Hey, how you doing? Today we're gonna talk about how you can get the most stable footage using Sony mirrorless cameras and the Zhiyun Weibo Lab. So I've been using this gimbal a lot since it was first released and before that I used other gimbals like the DJI Ronin S and a few other ones. And one thing about Sony mirrorless cameras is if you plug it in, if you plug any USB cable into the camera and have it set as PC remote, which is meant to be able to use a computer or a laptop, something like that, to view your pictures as you're shooting them, it disables in-body stabilization. One of the reasons for that, I think, is probably Sony assumed that the camera would be sitting on a tripod and you would be sitting at a table or have a laptop sitting next to you to be able to look at your pictures as you're taking them in finer detail than on the back screen. However, when we're using something like the Zen Weevil Lab or other gimbals that plug in via USB to be able to control the camera controls via controls on the gimbal itself, which is fantastic, it disables in-body stabilization and there's no workaround for that. That's not a fault of Zhiyun or DJI or any of the other gimbal manufacturers out there. It's the way that Sony uh, programmed and set up their firmware. And so how do we overcome that to get the most smooth footage? Because a gimbal will give you pretty smooth footage provided you follow some best practices. But there are some ways that you can work around it with Sony mirrorless cameras specifically in order to be able to get the best footage. So first off, best practices with a gimbal. Any gimbal is gonna help you get much smoother footage, but there are a couple of things you can do to get really smooth footage. And the first is make sure you balance your camera as perfectly as you possibly can. That way the gimbal is gonna to have to work the least in order to be able to make the camera move the best, if that makes sense. Uh, the, if your camera is off balance, then some of your motors, whether it's on this axis or this axis or this, the other axis, uh, your, the motors, the gimbal is gonna to have to work harder in order to smooth out the motions on that axis for the camera. So the more or the better balanced your camera is on the gimbal, the easier it is for the gimbal to be able to move the camera and take away some of those uh, movements and smooth them out. Second is the way you move or the way you walk when you're using a gimbal. The smoother you walk or run, the smoother your motions, the easier time the gimbal will have of making that motion smooth and beautiful and cinematic and giving you that wonderful, lovely gimbal smoothness that we all look, want and desire. Now, I could do a video about other ways or ways to walk and ways to move when you use a gimbal. Um, in a lot of my videos, in a lot of my cases, I don't have that luxury because I'm either crawling through some ice cave over rocks and basically trying not make, to make sure I don't get hurt or I'm running at a full out sprint through snow as these couple of clips you've seen here. So getting the smoothest footage isn't necessarily possible. So where in-body stabilization on the Sony mirrorless cameras comes in helpful is especially on those smaller micro movements or jitters, or uh, it helps to smooth those out. So it works in conjunction with the gimbal to make your footage even smoother. But because uh, as soon as you plug a USB cable in to be able to use any of the controls of your camera here or view it via, especially this gimbal, view it via the remote, um, the wireless image transmission, which is great, you lose the in-body stabilization. So if you have a lens with optical stabilization, that's great. I don't, none of my lenses have optical stabilization and I haven't found it really to be that big of a problem. But there are a couple of workarounds that you can use to be able to not plug a USB cable in with your Sony camera, but still give you uh, ways to see and frame uh, your shot. One is using an external monitor like this Feel World MA5, which is a great inexpensive little monitor um, and, and setting it up here, if you wanna see the accessories I use to attach something like this to the gimbal, I'll link this video right here in the, in the uh, cards. Um, but having an external monitor, and that allows you to be able to see and frame no matter what angle you're using this gimbal at, and especially if you're working in brighter conditions, having a brighter monitor to be able to see your, your shot is helpful. The only downside of that is that you have to set up your uh, aperture, your ISO, and your shutter speed all in advance, and then push and start and stop recording on the camera. I haven't found that to be that hard and or drive me that crazy because most of the shots I'm getting, I'm, I'm preparing for in advance anyway. So the second way actually gives you more control without having to touch the camera um, and without having to mess with the gimbal while being able to shoot and see as well. And that's by using your phone. 
Now, if you get the Play Memories mobile app and your phone or your camera has Wi-Fi connectivity, you can use Sony's Play Memories mobile app and I believe they're going to release a new version of this app or actually a completely new app here this month or next month that will be better and get rid of some of the bugs that are in the Play Memories mobile app. But as you can see, if you have the Play Memories mobile app, it gives you control over your shutter speed, your uh, f-stop and your ISO and you can toggle through a couple of displays so that you can also see what you're trying to shoot and frame it all from your gimbal just like that you can also start and stop recording here however that's one of the bugs with the play memory mobile app at least for me with the sony a7 III is that when you stop recording the app sort of freezes in a weird way it still works but you can't start recording again right away and I find I have to shut down and start the app a lot. So I will use this to set up all my settings and I'll use this to frame the shot, but I still start and stop recording on the camera itself because that seems to work best. I haven't found that using Sony's app versus the ZUY Play app, uh, video lag wise, I haven't found a big difference. Both have a little bit of lag. Both seem to offer about the same um, consistency in performance that way but uh, it is a little bit of a bummer not being able to use these controls here to completely control if you want the most smooth footage. Now, that being said, I've shot both ways. If you balance the camera well, and if you walk and move smoothly as, you, as smoothly as you can, it, it makes very, very little difference. But if you're running at a full sprint through the snow or you're crawling through some place in, you know, underneath a glacier, I know so many of us do that, crawl underneath glaciers, because it's, it's a thing that people do. Um, having that little bit of extra stabilization really does help. So if you've been looking at your footage and realizing that it's not as smooth as you would like, this could be part of the problem. You have to unplug the USB cable and you have to use one of these workarounds to be able to get the smoothest footage, but still be able to use some of the functionality without having to touch your camera all of the time and set the shots up. That being said, if you wanna see my full review of the Z and Weeble Lab, you can click or tap right here. If you wanna see the accessories that I use to turn this thing into a giant, massive, unbelievably crazy cinema rig, you can click or tap right here. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all the social things. I'll see you again soon.